since 2011, I have been directing excavations at the site of Hukok, which is an ancient Jewish village very close to the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee. Among the remains that we have been bringing to light is a monumental late Roman, that is 5th century CE, synagogue building. And what makes this building so spectacular, aside from its monumentality, it's built of very large blocks of stone, is the decoration. It's paved with stunning and unique mosaic floors. Are we only just have the east aisle? So far, the mosaics have just been spectacular. first mosaics that we discovered were in the summer of 2012, and there we found three patches of preserved mosaics, a decorated border along the inside of the wall, another patch that has a Hebrew dedicatory inscription flanked by two female faces, and we don't actually yet know the identity of these mystery women. And in the third patch is, is in the southwest corner of the square, where we found our first Samson scene. And there what we have is a depiction of the episode uh, that is described in the book of Judges chapter 15, where Samson takes revenge on the Philistines by taking 300 foxes, and he puts them in pairs, and he ties their tails together and puts lighted torches between their tails and sets them loose to burn down the agricultural fields of the Philistines. The following summer, in 2013, we excavated a square just to the south of that, and just inside there, we found our second Samson scene, which is an episode described in the book of Judges 16, where Samson goes to Gaza to sleep with a prostitute, and the people of Gaza decide that they're going to ambush him in the morning when he comes out, but he fools them. He gets up at midnight, and he picks up the gates of the city, puts them on his shoulders, and carries them towards Hebron. And so what we have in that square is uh, the upper part of Samson carrying the gate of Gaza on his shoulders. In that same summer, 2013, we opened up yet another square to the north that depict uh, these various figures. It's clearly a historical scene of what we could see of the uppermost panel includes battle elephants, so elephants with shields tied to their sides and some male figures. And then the middle register or the middle strip shows a series of arches that frame male figures. And then the lowest uh, register shows a dying soldier and a dying bull. Because of the combination of uh, battle elephants, the young men and an elderly man, which are framed by the arches, the lighted oil lamps, we were thinking along the lines of that what we have here is some sort of scene connected with the Maccabean martyrdom traditions. And I should say that the, that the depiction of elephants in our mosaic immediately signaled that what we have here is not a biblical scene, of course, because there are no elephants in the Hebrew Bible. Automatically, we knew that this is important because this is the first ever non-biblical story that's been found decorating an ancient synagogue. So no matter what it is, it's important because it's not a biblical story. This past summer in 2014, we were able to expose the rest of the upper part of that mosaic, the upper panel, which ended up showing a meeting between two large male figures. One figure is clearly intended to represent a Greek military commander and ruler, and the other main male figure is a bearded elderly man wearing a white tunic and mantle. And so now the question is, what, what is this? But among the main interpretations or possibilities that we're considering are that Perhaps this is still connected with the Maccabean martyrdom traditions or the stories of the Maccabees, in which case the Greek figure could be Nicanor or could be Antiochus IV. Another possibility, the one that I actually favor, is that what we have here is a depiction of the legendary meeting between Alexander the Great and the Jewish high priest, and that that royal Greek figure is actually uh, uh, holding by the horns, bringing by the horns a large bull. I personally favor the Alexander because it just looks such, like such a conspicuous thing. This Greek military commander and ruler and this bearded elderly man wearing um, a white, white garments. To my mind, it best fits the stories that we have about Alexander. Now, let me just say that probably what we have in our mosaic, whether it's the Maccabees or Alexander or something else, is a version of a story that will not match up in every detail with the stories that happen to have come down to us in writing. Now, uh, another thing, by the way, why I think it's Alexander personally, is none of the figures are labeled, so there are no names with them. At any rate, you think to yourself, well, you know, ancient people looking at this without having any labels of the figures. Who is the one ancient Greek military ruler who would not need to be identified 
by an inscription who, who was so great, who was so famous, that you would not have to label him. To my mind, that's one reason. I think Alexander is the only figure who, who was so famous, so great. And so uh, in the Journal of Roman Archaeology for 2014, uh, we have a uh, sort of interim report on the first three seasons of excavation, so 2011 through 2013. Uh, of course, we will continue to produce uh, seasonal reports and interim reports. And in the end, after the excavation ends, whenever that is, we'll prepare a final report. And in the meantime, for more information, people can visit our website, which is simply www.hukok, H-U-Q-O-Q, dot org.